Folks, is the market on fire again? I'll talk about that and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for a week ending January 17th, 2024. Lots of you have recently subscribed to this channel. Thank you for that. Many of you that enjoy the content have not yet subscribed. If you like the content, consider subscribing. So is the market on fire again? And the reason I want to talk about this is there are no shortage of social media posts out there. I mean, I see them, I'm sure you see them, where agents are talking about the frenzy, that the market is on fire. They're talking about properties with 20, 25 offers on it. They're talking about uh, pre-construction sales where there's lineups out the door. Let me tell you what I'm experiencing out there. If we compare what's happening right now to the last quarter from even further, from all of summer, the last two quarters basically, we have an uptick in activity right now. Buyers that have been sitting on the sideline, this is my explanation, buyers that have been sitting on the sideline seem to be back in the game. They've come in and their attitude is, is okay. Let's look, let's buy. They're not all buying, but they seem to be aggressively looking. This is what we're experiencing. We're experiencing a shortage of listings and from my own buyer clients, with some of them, depending on where they're looking, there's, there's properties to show them. Others, once we show them the few properties that fit their criteria, and we're not talking about they're looking for something so, so specific that it's next to impossible to find, but we're just not able, once we go out the first once or twice, we're not able to show them other properties because there's no really new listings that, that fit their needs. So we are experiencing a shortage of listing versus the amount of eyeballs now, the amount of buyers that are out there looking. But to suggest the market is on fire seems a, a sen, a, it, it seems that they're taking an aspect of the market and are, are sensationalizing it. So yes, there have been many, many more than anybody expected, properties with multiple offers, as many as 20, 25 offers on a property. I know it sounds crazy to you, but that's what we're seeing out there. Not on all, but nobody really expected it the first couple of weeks of January, but that's what we're seeing. The other part of that story is some of those properties are not even selling. Can you imagine 20, 25 offers and the property doesn't sell? Now, back in the, if we look back to recent history in the, the crazy time that we've had in the past, you get 20, 25 offers on a property you are selling and you as the seller got way more than you ever expected. But today, we're seeing some of those properties not selling. And some of those properties that are, are selling, some of them, even with multiple offers, are selling with conditions, which is something that we didn't see in the past. And others are selling. But what we're not seeing is the selling way over asking price. They're selling at what I would consider probably where they should have sold, relative market value. And, and I know there's a strong argument for, for many of you out there that think, oh, prices are, home prices are way overpriced right now and they should be 20, 30, 40% cheaper. So when I say market value, I, I'm not, I, what I'm talking about is right now in that neighborhood versus other homes, relatively speaking, other recent sales, that new sale is in line with what the other sellers got for their property. So if a home sold for a million bucks two weeks ago, the next one selling for about a million bucks. Now it could have been listed for $8.99, multiple offers, but it's selling for a million, not 1.1 or 1.2 and, and just creating a new high, high precedent. It's selling for probably what it should have sold for. So what does this tell you? Lots of buyers are out there looking. 
we're seeing it. I'm seeing it when we try to book showings. I'm seeing it when we we take our buyers and, and it happens to be the, the home we're looking at. It's during an open house time. There's lots of other buyers in there during the open house looking. Now, if you ran an open house the last six months, you were lucky to get people to show up at your open house. Today, it seems in a lot of neighborhoods, open houses are busy. Lots of buyers are looking. They're not necessarily paying way, way more than a home should sell for. That's what we're seeing. And there's a shortage of listings. Now, at some point, are we going to see more listings? Well, we expect it, but we're probably going to see more buyers too. So the next few weeks are going to be really, really interesting. Buyers are out there, but they're cautious. They're, they are prepared to buy, but they're cautious. They're not necessarily going in blind and taking and removing all conditions and prepared to outbid everybody else. They're going in at a number that makes sense to them. Now, knowing what these numbers are and knowing the right strategies to use really boils down to who you work with. Who you work with matters, especially in this market. It's very, very tricky right now. And a lot of people really don't understand what's happening out there. If you feel this video can help somebody you know, pass it along. If you get value from what we're talking about, subscribe. If you want to speak with me about your real estate situation, up here there's a link to my calendar. Below the in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you, and we'll talk about whatever's on your mind. Now, let's get into the numbers. So folks, this report is just for the city of Toronto. And we're going to be focused on the freehold market, mostly detached, but semis and towns also. So let's get started here. I do have a whole bunch of areas here for average sold prices. I got Durham region here at 1,032 average sold price. This is just for detached properties. In the middle, I've got Toronto and Mississauga pretty much the same, which is rare because Normally, Toronto, if you look at the thick red line, the average sold price is higher than what it is in Mississauga. And then at the top, as usual, we got the York Region cities, Vaughan, Richmond Hill, and Markham. But we are zeroing in on just the city of Toronto. Detached 1467, 1467000 is the average sold price. Then we got semis and towns and condos at 675000 Now, we're not going to talk about condos in this show, but I am putting the average sold price here. There's a huge difference in price between condos and the detached average sold prices. So let's get right into it. So here's the city of Toronto, detached properties broken down by week for a whole year. This dotted line up here is 2023 versus 2024. 72 detached properties were sold for week ending January 17th. 10 of those were at $2 million or more. Average sold price up from the previous week to 1467 Now I got arrows all over the place here. And it's just to show you the pattern. Many times it's seasonal, but for sure, interest rate hikes and announcement and public sentiment, all that play into it. But a lot of this is also seasonal. January heading into spring or middle of spring, sales increase, generally speaking, average prices increase, generally speaking. And then over the course of the summer, prices, uh, volume comes down, so sales come down, prices come down, then into spring, uh, into the fall, <laughs> sales go up, prices go up, and then headed into the winter towards the end of the year, sales come down, prices come down. It's a seasonal shift that we see every single year. We just don't always know when it's going to start, when it's going to finish compared to or versus the previous season. So you'll see here that you know, it's gone up and down, maybe not on a weekly basis, but overall, that's the pattern every single year. So here we go. 
1,467,000 is 3% higher than where we were this time a year ago. The median price of 1.2 million is 1% lower than where we were this time a year ago. 72 were sold, little over quarter, 26% sold at list price or more. Based on what I was talking about earlier, I expect to see that percentage increasing as long as things stay the way they are now. There seems, we seem to have a shortage of listings. Here we go to the listings window here. 174 were listed. That's up from the previous week where we listed 147. Active listings is coming down. So think about it. Sales are up. Active listings, the amount of properties available for sale is coming down. What do you think is going to happen to months of inventory? If you said months of inventory is coming down, that the market is getting tighter, that there's fewer choices, you'd be right. So months of inventory is now sitting at 2.7 down from the previous week. Average days on market is the same, still sitting at 38, but months of inventory is down. That's all the city of Toronto. If we break the city down into nine sections and we say all Toronto sitting at 2.7, let's look at some of these neighborhoods here. High Park, Parkdale, 1.9 months of inventory, 40%. I mean, look, five were sold. We say 40% sold at list price or more, um, but 1.9 is the months of inventory. East York, Riverdale Beaches, 2.3 is the months of inventory. Scarborough, 1.6 is the months of inventory. I could tell you some of the areas that we're seeing the most properties being sold with an offer date or no offer date, but multiple buyers are trying to buy the property. It's in these areas with the lowest months of inventory. York Mills, Rosedale, only seven were sold. Months of inventory is pretty high at 6.1. The average sold price is more than 3.4 million. Let's take a look at semis. 21 semi-detached properties were sold. Three of those were at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price is 1,225,000. 1,225 is 5% lower than where we were this time last year. The median price for semis is 1,075,000. That's 14% lower than where we were this time last year. Months of inventory for semi-detached properties is sitting at 1.7. That's really low. So if we stay the same, the, sem the buyers that are buying semis, and we just don't change that ratio of listings to the amount of buyers, 1.7 is a seller's market. That's very low months of inventory. Here's townhouses. Townhouses, the average Sold price for townhouses is 939000 It's way off pace from where we were this time a year ago, but sales are so few for townhouses, it's really hard to get, I guess, a true representation, accurate numbers as to what's really happening out there as far as prices go. But it's 32% lower than where we were this time a year ago. The median price is 27% lower. And months of inventory is sitting at... 2.3. There was only nine townhouses sold. These are freehold townhouses. Here's a quick summary of months of inventory. Now, we say between three to five months of inventory is a balanced market. Except for condos sitting at 4.1. I, I got to say, right now, we are sitting in a seller's market approaching for some, it's in the, the, the bottom end of a balanced market. That's why we're seeing some multiple offers. That's why we're seeing a lot more buyers than sellers. If that doesn't change, don't expect to see a drop in prices. As long as this is the dynamics, we need to see more listings. But then again, if more buyers come out of the woodwork, well, that relationship, that ratio between supply and demand, sellers and buyers, that's really going to determine whether properties sit on the market and prices come down or not. 
and that's really what I'm focused on looking here. The months of inventory kind of tells me what's happening right now versus supply and demand. And in turn, what can we expect to see with prices? Who you hire matters. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.